book is Shadows of Unicorn. And oh, I'm so fascinated by unicorns. And I've been waiting to talk to Joe Glasasco, met her about her book. And she joins us on Author's Corner here on America Tonight with me, Kate Delaney. And Joe, it's great to finally catch up with you. How are you? I'm just fine. And your book, Shadows of the Unicorn, what was it that motivated you to write the book? What prompted that? Okay, so um, so the story is really a, a psychological, emotional um, story about my sisters and uh, m- my relationship with my sister. And the big subject between us was always family and love, you know. <laughs> And so, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, I lost Yeah, that's okay, because you're talking about your family. You're talking about your family and love and the reason for what the book's about. Right, okay, so, um, we had kind of a a very fractured family, and, um, it it always led to a lot of discussion between us, and she was 2,000 miles away from me, so every discussion we had was on the phone. Um... So we, uh, the things we talked about are the things that became the subjects of that story. So that, because that was always on my mind and especially right after she died. Um, so I just started writing and I just, you know, uh, she was in the medical industry. I was in education and corporate America stuff. And so when I write about people, I try to change their occupations, et cetera, especially people I know. And uh, <laughs> so at any, yeah, when, um, when I started writing, I just, these names came to me and I started putting the people in situations and getting them into trouble and out of trouble, that sort of thing. So um, the main character is, uh, is it a main subject that we were discussing and developing between us was the fact that why so many um, girls do not recognize the quality men in their lives. And especially when, when you get into the um, the professionals where the guys get older when they get married and they can't find dates and they can't do this and that. And so that was, that was really the, the, the um, start of that story. And so I, I focused on a, the world I knew better was uh, education. So I, I made the main character uh, a, a rather young professor who's uh, totally wound up in his head and then um, does not listen to or hear the concerns of his heart. And um, so uh, that, that's how that story evolved. And then I asked, all the you know, I interview all my characters, and then I ask them why they're doing this and why they're doing that. So at any rate, uh, that's how that story got picked and started. And then as I developed it, I just chose the Middle Ages as his um, subject matter study because it's esoteric enough that you live in your head all the time. And so um, then I had his inner conflict being uh, the conflict between his head and his heart. And, uh, and he does not, uh, it's, I, another conflict I added was, this is the, um, 1980s where women's live is, uh, irritating at most people and especially the men <laughs> and, uh, girls are wanting to be free. So it, that's, that's how those subplots developed, but they developed as I, as I started writing and needing challenges for my, for my, uh, actors, not actors. Characters. Characters, yeah. Uh, and it's so yeah. interesting, the characters, you you know, you talk about interviewing, what a brilliant thing to do, because that helps you really build their personalities, right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, the four, four main things I have to have on paper before I can jump into a book is I have to have a clear understanding of setting, because setting is what creates all the problems, <laughs> or at least, you know, that's my my way of thinking. Uh, the second thing I need is I need clearly defined characters and the characters have to be grow out of the setting. So, uh, 
because everything that they're going to be challenged by is going to be in their setting and among their uh, people that they have to deal with. So the third thing is I have to have a cast of characters who are going to come out of that setting. And uh, the fourth thing is, I'm not going to remember that right now, problems. I have to give them problems. Yeah. So, and the problems have to be problems that are realistic to the setting. And I wanted, because because he was a middle-aged person, he's really stuck into the world of um, the desert fathers, you know, of uh, the three, uh, three, mm, of the 12th and 13th century. He's in, that's the kind of thing he studies and stuff. And so he, his main big problem is that he's been, he's lost his, uh, opportunity to teach in an Eastern school where all the, where he, he thinks all the, um, education for the Middle Ages is. And that's where he did all of his learning. So when he gets, he runs the mock of his, um, professor that guides his work and he runs the mock of her. And so she refuses to help him find a position. And he ends up having to go to the only place he could find a, um, a medieval position in 1980 is out in the West someplace. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I, what I did was I chose Idaho as being the West place because that was the worst place I could think for him. And, um, it mm-hmm. is absolutely stunning, gorgeous and beautiful as a setting. But he doesn't see any of it. He's he's uh, gets a job in a small Christian school, and so the you know the um, the ethics and stuff are tight, like like uh, they would be in a church area. And so then he he could uh, be challenged by all that stuff. And then uh, he, Basically, the cl- conflicts and stuff all come from his conflict with the environment, his conflict with the women that are, they just started their, um, uh, female values, uh, type classes. They're not called feminism or anything by that time because it's all new programs. And so he, he has trouble with, you know, having to deal with having, uh, Female teachers that he has to teach with, and oh, uh, so and he's he doesn't he's not a very friendly person, and so he uh, d- doesn't win a lot of friends in the environment, in which he considers a wasteland. So, uh, and people are they don't disregard him, but they're not overly friendly to him. He has one friend, and um, so that's how that happens, and then he. Uh, about a third of the way, or not third of the way, at the turning, the major turning point of the book, which is in the uh, first third of the book, is um, he, he he has a major uh, crisis back in his his home, which is in Delaware, and Delaware is the exact opposite of Idaho as far as lush green trees, people, education, all that. And so um, he has to go back there and um, take care of, of the issue. So uh, anyhow, that starts him on finding out that he isn't who he always thought he was, that he, you know, all of his background was totally different than he thought it was. And um, so then that just sets him on his journey and he has to unglue all that stuff. And so by the crisis point in the middle of the book, he feels like he has lost all of his rec- uh, all of his um, name. He's lost his name. He's lost his education, his job, everything. And so that's the point at which he has to start uh, being aware and um, yeah, changing that. Uh, yeah. Pardon me. He has to be aware of what's going on with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he has to find out, and he's he's not wanting to ask questions about his own life or his own emotional state. So, uh, at any rate, uh, a girl uh, student um, applies to be his teacher's aide or student 
Yeah, I think it is a teacher's aid. Um, it's a lot of thinking in the book. So, mm-hmm. but but what I try to do when I'm throwing my reader at a lot of thinking because I know readers don't necessarily like to do that. But the one thing that I hope that people take away is the conversations that my sister and I got into about love and lovely relationships and um, and how not everything is as it turns out in the movies <laughs> and um, that uh, love is something that is uh, very, uh, very important to consider and think about as you're going through the processes mm. and considering as you, I have about, I think, five or six relationships developing throughout the book and then um, some are going bad and some are going okay but um, just talking about it and, and I, I try to provide the conversations that you might talk about when you're nice. going on a journey yeah. with yeah and that's yeah. and you're right that is so the point and you nailed that point it was such a delight to talk to you Joe shadows of oh, the unicorn we can't wait uh, for a future conversation thanks for coming on Okay, thank you very much for the invitation, Kate. I really appreciate it. It's a rich man's world. Email us at info at greatwritersmedia.com. Call us at 877-600-5469. Subscribe now. 